It's time, you guys, for some more epic meal prep. Hey guys, Kira here from 50 Shades of Mom, tips for all shades of mom life. And in today's video, I am back to share with you another episode of Epic Meal Prep. So this video took a little bit longer to get out to you guys than normal. I like to share a meal prep video at least every two weeks, but just with me focusing a little bit more here at home with the kids and schooling, this one took a month to get to you guys. So what I have for you is just some clips of some things that I filmed over the last month that I do to set myself up for success, whether it's weekly or for the month, and I filmed them to share with you guys. Some of it is things I've never shared and new recipes, and some of them are the same old, same old that are my tried and true. So I'm going to bring you down to the counter and I'll show you what I've been prepping in my kitchen for the last month. All right, guys, so the first thing we're starting off with is some breakfast meal prep. Breakfast is probably my favorite thing to prep. The very first collab I ever did with Vanessa over at Lemonade Mom was a big, large back-to-school breakfast meal prep that I'll link up above. But what provoked this inspiration of doing egg sandwiches was these beautiful croissants that I got from Costco. So I'm going to use that for some egg sandwiches, and I also got new eggs. So whatever eggs I had, that were old I threw in a Tupperware and those are the ones I was going to use for the egg sandwiches not that they're old they're just the older ones I had some leftover ham that I needed to use up there's the sliced American cheese and the splash of milk that I use in my eggs there's the wax paper we're going to use to wrap up these egg sandwiches and then here is some bacon that I made and I left it on the pan because we're actually going to cook the eggs right in that grease and then I also made some of those Mrs. Jones chicken sausages that I'm just going to cut in half and use on the sandwiches as well. So I started off by removing the bacon from the pan. Again, we're gonna cook the eggs right in that grease in that sheet pan. My husband really, really loves when I make these breakfast sandwiches and I cook the eggs in the oven. I know it sounds a little bit strange, but when it cooks in the bacon grease, it really puffs up and gets light and fluffy, which just serves as the perfect kind of eggs for an egg sandwich. So I went ahead and put a dozen eggs into a bowl and then I added a splash of milk. If I had heavy cream, I would have added that. I actually love heavy cream in my eggs. It adds another element of fluffy. And then I put it in that sheet pan. I know you see a lot of the grease around the surface area, but once I got it into the oven, I used a fork and just kind of moved it around so that that bacon grease flavor got evenly distributed between all of the eggs. So now while those cook on 325 degrees for about 20 minutes, I went ahead and started prepping my croissants. So I laid out individual pieces of wax paper for each sandwich I was doing, and then I cut the croissants in half. I took one slice of American cheese and I just kind of broke it in half and put a half on each side next to each other just because the croissants are so long. And then I put two pieces of ham on the ones I wanted ham on or two pieces of bacon on the ones I was going to do bacon and then I did two sausages cut in half lying the flat side down on the ones that I wanted to do sausage and by the time I got that all prepped the eggs were done like that looks so good you can tell where the bacon grease kind of settled and made like a crispy yumminess and then I go ahead and I cut the eggs completely down the center and then I cut in strips going across so that I had exactly how many eggs that I needed for each sandwich. Please note the Christmas sweatpants attire that I am wearing in this video because you will see that my attire changes throughout this video, except most of the time it's some kind of Christmas related bottom because that's how I roll. I don't know about you guys, but that's how it's just working on this quarantine. Now you can kind of see in here why my husband likes them like this. If you do plain old regular scrambled eggs inside of a pan, they're too loose and they kind of fall apart, but this stays in one piece and it just makes it so much easier for assembly and for eating. So once I was done, 
done getting all the ones that I was going to use for the freezer, I just went ahead and made some sandwiches for all of us here that were eating breakfast for now. And then I packed away the rest of them for the freezer for nine, you guys. That's how long ago I made these. But I got four sausage, two bacon, and two ham for the freezer. So again, I love a breakfast meal prep. All right, now we are on to me making sauce. This is later on in the day. And I do not go over everything with you guys, like what spices I'm using, because I've done two full videos on my meat sauce. One that I did a super long time ago, and then one that I remade just because the old one was so old. So here's just kind of an array of spices. And I'll make sure to link that video up above and down below if you guys want to see it. But it's pretty much just some ground sausage that I put on the bottom of the pan. I usually use about a pound. Sometimes if I'm making a big vat, I'll do some ground beef also, or I'll do half and half. But most of the time I just do sausage. I like that flavor. And then once I get like a good brown on it, I'll push all of the meat over to the side on the bottom of the pan. You can see all of that fat is at the bottom, which really helps just give it some great flavor. And then I add in some diced onion and some garlic. Most of the time I'll chop fresh garlic, but I just happen to have some of the jarred kind on hand and being that I'm Italian like there's no such thing as too much garlic so I did two huge heaping tablespoons and I just did that completely until all of my veggies were sweated down and then this is just my food processor because I had some of those Tutoroso plum tomatoes and I like more of a creamy textured sauce so I just put that in the food processor and gave it a zip and added that to the cooked meat onions and garlic and then once that was into the pan I added in some cans of tomato sauce I used four cans. I thought those cans were a little bit bigger when I bought them from Costco. That was my mistake. But after I empty the cans, I fill each can like a quarter of the way with water and I keep swishing it around and adding it from each can to each can. So it gets all the residue out and then I add that to the pot. So here's just kind of like an overview of all of my spices. My favorite ingredient is sugar because believe it or not, I like a sweeter sauce. But I have some onion powder, some garlic powder, some salt some pepper, some fresh basil, some Italian seasoning. I love parm cheese, and I also love a tiny pinch of red chili pepper flakes. I feel like just that little bit of an element adds just a little bit of heat to that sweet and totally just balances everything out. But then we're just gonna give it a good stir, you guys, and then the key to a good sauce is low and slow and letting it simmer and letting all of those flavors just kind of congeal together. So I'll let this sit on the stove for a good four hours on low before I even think about serving it. But once the sauce is all done and cooked up, I kind of put all of today's accomplishments out on the counter for you guys to see what else I made. So I went ahead and prepped up some pot roast. I had just gone to Costco and I had gotten two beautiful packaged pot roasts. So I separated them for freezing and I threw some carrots, some onions, some celery, and some seasonings in each bag and then just dropped them in my deep freezer. And while I was cutting up the veggies for that stuff, I went ahead and just prepped up all of the celery and put it in one of those tower containers from the Dollar Tree. That was my leftover onion. That was all of my scraps from the carrots, the onions, and the celery that I save in my freezer for broth. And then that's just the leftover regatta cheese that I have from making baked ziti. So here is the sausage that I got from Costco and I broke it apart into three pieces. One piece I used for the sauce already and that was the other two that I froze. And then I also had taken out some chicken a day or two before, a rotisserie chicken that I had gotten from the grocery store already used up and we made quesadillas with it and here's what we had left over. So I just threw that in a little sandwich bag and wrote chicken for soup and the date on it so that I can use it at a later date. And then here is the sauce that I made at least what was left over after I made that sauce I made a baked ziti so I took whatever sauce was left over I did two separate full Tupperwares each Tupperware giving me a meal and then that smaller Tupperware is better suited for like a pizza and then here is what was left over from the baked ziti that we didn't eat there's always tons of leftovers whenever I make baked ziti which is why I made it this particular day because it's a Thursday before Easter so I just figured what 
whatever was left over, we could have some kind of like warm baked zini as another part of our Easter dinner. But that was it. That was what I made for meal prep on this day. Now we're going to get into a dessert. So this was a keto brownie recipe that I found on Pinterest and it seemed super, super easy because it was one of those things where it was not a lot of ingredients and it was pretty much a dump and go. So we needed some baking powder and some sugar. I just have some Lincanto erythritol back there in that jar. You need some pure vanilla. You need some almond flour. You need two eggs a half a cup of butter which is one stick and some unsweetened cocoa powder so that is pretty much it which i feel like most people have all of those ingredients in their house already or at least some kind of a derivative so the first step was to just go ahead and melt your butter. So I just put it in a microwave safe bowl and threw it in the microwave for one minute. And then you're going to add a half a cup of what your ever choice of sugar you're using. And then you're going to add a half a cup of almond flour or whatever flour you're using. You are going to add your two eggs and then you're going to add that cocoa powder, which is one third of a cup. You're going to add a quarter teaspoon of a baking powder and then a one teaspoon of vanilla. And then you're just gonna go ahead and whisk that up until it's all done. We're going to stick it in a greased nine by nine brownie pan or casserole dish, and then we'll stick it in the oven for 350 degrees for 25 minutes. I will say that I could tell by the way that it went into the casserole dish that it was going to cook up a little cakier than I like. I prefer more of like a warm, fudgy, chewy kind of brownie than the cakey kind. So this was okay, but I think I'm going to search for a better keto kind of brownie or a low carb kind. Next up, we are back to some more breakfast meal prep. Again, I love prepping breakfast stuff and there isn't really much to this. This is a boxed pancake mix that you just add some water, but I had to show you guys this because this is the Pillsbury Funfetti mix. My husband grabbed this when he went to Walmart like three or four weeks back. I couldn't find pancake mix, so I asked him to look when he went to Walmart and he found the Funfetti kind. He picked it up because he knows that's something I would never buy, but I am so glad he did because this is probably some of the most delicious kind of box mix I have ever had. I've tried a whole bunch. And again, these are very simple mixes. Sometimes you have ones that have to add other ingredients. For the most of the time, a lot of these pancake mixes, you just need to add water. But this ended up cooking up to have the most delicious, delicious flavor. I usually go ahead and divide the box. So I do some with pancakes and then I do some with waffles and we'll do breakfast for dinner that night. And whatever we don't eat, then I just go ahead and throw in the freezer and use as some kind of breakfast meal prep. So I started off with the pancakes. Again, this is the kind of mix that only requires water. So I just threw half the box measured into a bowl and just added some of my filtered water. I gave it a good stir and I always let my pancake mix just sit for a little bit. And then I used a buttered greased griddle. I really like using my griddle. I can get a lot of pancakes on at one time. And I also like using a third cup measuring cup to disperse my pancake mix onto the griddle. This way you can see that every pancake ends up coming out the exact same size, which makes it easier for not just eating, but also for putting it into the freezer. Now, someone asked, how do I separate them after they come out of the freezer? If you just let the pancakes sit out in your Ziploc freezer storage bag that you're storing them in for just a few minutes, they get soft enough to where you can just separate them. So once I was done with the pancakes, I put them all on a platter for us to eat off of for dinner. And then now it was time to make the waffles. So I went ahead and moved my griddle out of the way, got my waffle iron heating up, and then just mixed the rest of the box into the bowl with some water. And then when you're making waffles, you also need to add eggs and oil to that. 
I know you guys saw my little girl's feet in the background. Well, as soon as she saw that I was cooking in the kitchen, there she was trying to help. She wanted to stir the mix. I didn't let her put any of the mix into the waffle iron just because it was super hot, but she has been so active with trying to cook with me in the kitchen, which really makes me happy because my boys never really were too interested. Mason more than Jacob, but Maya most of all. So now that my waffle iron was hot and ready to go, I went ahead and loaded the first batch of waffles into this. I absolutely love this waffle maker and it is linked under kitchen supplies in my Amazon store if you guys want to check it out, but it makes four square waffles in one clip. So although it takes a lot of batter to get it going, it still generates a lot of waffles in just one go around. So Again, I absolutely love this waffle maker and I love that the waffle plate iron part comes out and a griddle piece slides in. So you also can use the waffle iron as a griddle. But believe it or not, this is what's left over after we all ate. Pretty much everybody ate the pancakes. So I had more waffles left than pancakes. But here's the pancakes we had left over from our last time's meal prep. So I just keep reusing the same bag. I took my older pancakes out. I loaded all of the new pancakes in and then just put the old pancakes on top so we would use them first but I'm not gonna lie like I've been salivating over eating these not necessarily the pancakes although they were good it was the waffles so here are the last two of the chocolate waffles that I made last time that I had left over so I pulled them out and then I loaded all of the waffles in and you guys those waffles tasted just like funnel cake I can't even explain it but it was so delicious and I don't know if you noticed but I was wearing Christmas shorts in that last clip yes I was wearing Christmas pants again but this time it was shorts all right so now we are on to making chicken parm and you can tell this has been a little while later because there's a sauce that we made in the beginning of the video but now we're going to use it to make some chicken parm and we're actually going to put this on some hero bread for everybody else but I'm going to eat mine on a plate so you're going to need some chicken two eggs some sauce a little bit of milk some vegetable oil for frying and then some breadcrumbs sometimes I use pork rinds for mine but on this particular day I just use bread crumbs for all of them. Now here I am filleting the chicken and so many of you guys had asked me to just do a video solely on filleting these and I've showed this in so many videos how exactly that I do it that I don't know if I would do a full video on it but again I've showed it so many times that I just put a full chicken cutlet on top of a cutting board and I cut away all of the fat and then the trick is just to lay your hand as flat as possible you almost can see my fingerprints in the chicken and I make I hold it down as tight as possible and then I put the knife in about a third of the way down and you just make sure to follow through the key is to have good knives which my knives are linked below in my Amazon store also but as long as you have a good knife and you follow through it's very easy to just carry that line all the way through that chicken cutlet and then you just continue to keep doing that all the way down until you have all of your pieces and then once all of your chicken is cut I went ahead and put my eggs and my milk in a bowl blended those up got some vegetable oil for frying into a frying pan to heat up and now you're just going to give each one of of your chicken pieces a egg and milk bath and then throw them in the breadcrumbs again if you're looking for a more low carb version of this and you don't want to use breadcrumbs on your chicken cutlets you can just use ground up pork rinds so you're going to go ahead and continue to do all of your chicken until all of it is coated with the milk and egg bath and then you're coating like I said whether it's breadcrumbs or pork rinds and then once you're all done we're going to get these chicken cutlets into the grease now a couple of you guys had said that whenever you do chicken cutlets you always burn them so the trick is to make sure that your oil is the perfect temperature before you do any kind of fermentation frying so I've had my oil already on for 15 minutes while we've spent the whole time breading the chicken because I really want it to be at that perfect medium temperature you don't want it to be too low or otherwise the chicken just sits in the grease and it soaks up all of the oil and you don't want a greasy chicken cutlet and then you don't want it to be too high obviously because then you don't want it to burn so I just make sure to have it on that really good medium temperature and when you put it in if you 
you see that it just has a mild sizzle, that's exactly where you want it to go. But the trick is to babysit it. There is no walking away from these chicken. You need to watch it. And I usually give it like about four minutes on each side. It doesn't need to be cooked all the way through because we're going to put it back in the oven after it's covered with sauce and cheese and make actual chicken parm but you just want a nice like you can see slow roll of the oil with some bubbles to it and then you're just going to keep going through all of your chicken until all of it has been browned on each side and then I threw it in a glass casserole dish covered it with my sauce and then covered it with some shredded mozzarella I ran out of room so I threw two pieces on the sheet pan which is kind of perfect because everything that was in the casserole dish is going to be enough for the hero bread and I save what's on the cookie sheet for myself. Everybody wanted chicken parm heroes but I'm trying to stop with the bread so here is what it looks like out of a 350 degree oven for about 25 minutes and again everything that's in that casserole dish is going to go on to this hero bread so I just butter both sides of the hero bread and then I put some garlic powder and Italian seasoning on it and then I stick the pieces of chicken parm on top of it and then stick it back in the oven for another couple of minutes so that the bread gets warm and toasty and everything kind of congeals together so everybody went ahead and had some chicken parm hero with salad that night but again I avoided the bread so this is what I ate and I already showed this clip in a what's for dinner video and I just had my piece of chicken parm on a plate with some salad but I absolutely love my chicken parm I have a whole video for this as well but I just figured I would include it right now as I was making it anyways all right guys and now so the next recipe is actually inspired by Paula Deen if you love you some Paula Deen thumbs up right now I am a huge fan I even went with all the girls to the lady and sons in Savannah so I'll link that video up above but what you guys see is some phyllo dough and she's actually been doing these videos on quarantine and she did a hand pie that she did in the air fryer and I thought that sounded amazing I ordered this dough off of Amazon fresh but I asked for regular pastry dough and they sent me phyllo dough which can get a little tricky so I have one egg some olive oil spray some powdered sugar and then some lemon cream compote like a pie filling and we're going to go ahead and make some of these hand pies so the egg is for the egg white you just want the white and this is what we're going to use to coat that phyllo dough it's going to give it that really flaky crispy crust now i've not worked a whole bunch with phyllo dough which is why i asked for regular pastry crust and what paula dean was using was regular pastry crust she said you actually could use biscuits like a plain old grand's biscuits she said that's how her grandma did it but she preferred it with pastry dough and she just sprayed it with a little bit of this olive oil spray and her egg white wash and stuck it in her air fryer that she was selling and it came up these really crispy yummy delicious things so that's what I was trying to do and then when they gave me phyllo dough I was a little scared because I've actually never cooked with phyllo dough in baking wise I've done a little egg cups which you guys are gonna see in the next meal prep video I've already filmed that so you guys will see that in the next one but this was something that I've only ever seen used baking when I worked in a Greek diner. This is something used for baklava, which is like cinnamon and raisins all baked in these layers of a phyllo dough. And then they also bake spanakopita, which is like spinach in between these different layers of a phyllo dough. But I've only ever seen it at the Greek diners and I've personally never worked with it. Again, like I said, other than and making these little egg cups so I was a little intimidated by it they're very 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 thin sheets that when layered together make like a crispy flaky dough and I read the instructions on it I looked some stuff up online and I just I was a little intimidated by what I was doing but by the end of it I think that I ended up 
kind of getting the hang of it and I should be able to do something moving forward with it but I ended up cutting the sheets in half it came in these long sheets and so I cut them in half and then it made more like a square and I put a little dollop of this lemon cream in the middle of it and then I folded it over and because it wasn't a perfect square it didn't match up perfectly so I did use the scissors and just kind of trim it till it ended up looking almost similar to a turnover and I egg whited all egg whited is that even a word I don't even know uh, I brushed egg whites on the edges and sealed them and pushed them all shut and then I brushed egg white over the whole thing and I put it on top of my little air fryer rack towards the end I ended up ditching the whole idea of doing triangles I ended up doing more of this rectangle square I was able to fit more in the air fryer basket anyways and it just worked out better for me I adjusted the temperature and the time and this is in my Kasori toaster oven which I absolutely love this thing I've done a whole video on it this is not a video sponsored by it but I literally just use it every single time I mean you guys are even gonna see towards the end me loading a chicken in here like I use it as a rotisserie I use it often and so uh, I was able to just kind of play with the time and temperature I sprayed it down with some of the olive oil spray before I put it in there and by the end of it like I said I think I nailed it I sprinkled it with a little bit of confectionery sugar and I kept some to eat for now and we froze some but I think this turned out really really good I would totally love to do this with other flavors and again it's something that took a little time to kind of finagle how to work it because it's something I've not ever done before but I loved the light and flaky texture and the sweetness of the lemon I'm a sucker for the flavor of lemon so it was just so good and something different like I don't often make pastries in the house so that was definitely something that I'd like to keep working with and mastering I'm not the best baker but I am determined that's for sure now we're going to make some hummus I found some chickpeas at the Dollar Tree and I figured I would use that to make some homemade hummus I hadn't done that in a while but the key to homemade hummus is tahini which is a sesame paste and sometimes if you buy it in the store it tends to be bitter from sitting on the shelf for a while so I had some sesame seeds in my pantry closet and I looked up how to make my own tahini so we're gonna actually make the tahini first so that we can go ahead and make the hummus which is pretty much just using the food processor and blending up toasted sesame seeds with salt and olive oil and then I have my chickpeas here some garlic some lemon and some green onion so that's the kind of hummus we're gonna make pretty much just a regular traditional kind and then here is our sesame seeds so I have a pan that I had on the stove for probably about 15 minutes again I like to preheat for a good long time with a frying pan so you get the right amount of temperature for what you're trying to accomplish so once i got a good temperature on the pan i threw my sesame seeds inside of there and i let them roast for probably about 10 minutes constantly shaking about one you know once every minute or so and eventually i got our seeds good and brown and toasty so i removed them from the heat i let them cool for just a few minutes and then i threw them in my food processor and I gave them a good blend until I got almost a powder consistency and then I threw in some olive oil and then some coarse sea salt and gave it a blend again I couldn't believe how good that it tasted when I tasted just the tahini it has a very strong sesame flavor so if you don't like that I don't think you would like this but it was really really good and I never realized that that was the undertone in hummus that you always tasted I never really could put my finger on what it was besides the chickpeas but once I emptied my food processor and got all of my tahini into a storage container I put in my chickpeas my tahini I put in a heaping spoon of garlic again I love me some garlic I put in some olive oil and I squoze in some lemon juice and then I gave my food processor a good spin again I really wanted a good and creamy consistency to hummus 
hummus. I don't really like chunky hummus, but I love all kinds of flavors. So I knew that I wanted it to be really creamy. So I kept testing it and I would add a little bit more olive oil just till I got that good consistency. And then once I was done, I took it all out of the food processor. I put it in a Tupperware and then it was time to add all of my favorite parts. Up to this point, we've pretty much just made a regular traditional hummus, but now we're going to spice it up. So I added in a little bit of cumin and mixed that all in. And then I added in some diced up green onion and the zest of that lemon and mixed that all in. And that pretty much just gave like a citrusy onion flavor, which really was so, so good. Once I smoothed it out in the container, I topped it with a little bit more olive oil with some more green onion, the lemon zest that I had left, and then a little bit of paprika. And me and Maya killed the heck out of that it was so good and before we move on i'd like to point out that i was wearing red and black christmas pajama pants in the last clip but anyways we are going to conclude this time's epic meal prep video with a rotisserie chicken so i have showed you guys this a bunch of times but i'm not gonna lie i am getting so darn good at getting this chicken good and tight underneath the string the first few times that i did it it would just fall right off and after going around and around and around the rotisserie after so long it would just flop over and the leg would come loose or a wing would come loose and it would rub against the bottom until it cooked and shrunk but i have been getting so good at getting this all tied up and then now i've been tying it to the rod which has actually been pretty smart because now it won't come off and then i've gotten on to where i can put these little forks that slide onto the rod and hold the chicken really tight onto the rotisserie rod i've gotten them to where i can get it so tight that this baby just doesn't go anywhere and i love to season it with trader joe's 21 seasoning salute it really is just like the perfect mixture of what you need to just give a good flavor to a chicken and then i just slide it right into the rotisserie it is literally so easy one side goes into like a peg hole and then the other side sits on the bracket that spins around and then that's it you set it to the rotisserie setting which is automatically 400 degrees for an hour and i usually up it to an hour and 20 minutes because i like a good crispy skin and that is it it'll go for an hour and 20 minutes and then it'll stop when it is all done and it comes out to be this lovely delectable chicken and I use this rotisserie for tons of things whether it's a recipe to make quesadillas lunches chicken salad but I would be lost without this machine and it is linked in my Amazon store below okay you guys so that's it for this time's meal prep video I hope you guys enjoyed and if you did make sure to give it a big thumbs up I've already filmed a bunch of things towards the next meal prep video, so hopefully I can get another one out to you sooner than I did this one. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed. I definitely liked playing with some of the desserts this time. I know I shouldn't be eating them, but I did try and make those keto brownies. I am on a hunt for a more like fudgy, chewy kind, and I did really enjoy playing with that phyllo dough. Again, I'm not a baker, but I liked trying to see if I was able to accomplish something that I've never done before. So I did definitely want to tweak that and see if I can master that but other than that guys again I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one bye guys